that's true. But, you know, it took... Who did that? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And this time, I hope we really are here. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the English show. Please let us know who you are in the chat. I'm here, Fluent CMC. Later, I got a rap. This is Vicky Hollett. Hello, Vicky. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And I'm very glad to be here on a very special day with Ooh. Fairy Tale Day. And, Fairy Tale. And I want to check because I don't. I'm not sure. We've had some problems with the stream, but it looks like mm. we're going today, and we've yeah, finally I hope got it so. working. Hopefully, we'll go. We're good to go. And again, tell us who you are, where you are, what's happening. Meet each other in the chat because. That's such an important interactive part of the English show. And Vicky, could you introduce yourself just in case anybody's out there who doesn't know the wonderful Vicky Holland? <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. I'm Vicky and I'm an English teacher and I want to help you learn English. And so I've worked with my husband, Jay, to create the English show and with our good friend, Fluency MC. Now, I'm a teacher, but I'm also a writer, and I also make a lot of videos, and you should check them out on my YouTube channel. And Fluency is mm. another writer, and he often writes music videos and raps. But I make videos, but video making is not my favorite thing to do. Making songs that help learners of English practice English through repetition, enjoyable fun repetition with songs that's my favorite thing and i love teaming up with vicky and jay for the english show and also i've made a bunch of videos maybe you've seen them uh if you follow simple english videos with vicky and jay and speaking of jay <laughs> where jay, is jay, are jay you is right here i'm right here <laughs> and i apologize for the delay in getting the show started but this is going to be such an exciting program. We yeah. have a game, we have conversation time, we have a wrap, all of that in the next hour, and I hope you all enjoy it, and I will try to make it work right. Okay. <laughs> Thank keep, you, Jay, keep for that. all you do behind the scenes, making the English show happen. As we say it. hello to some people in the chat box, we have Julio's here from Brazil. We have, uh, is that uh, Nandish from India? Yes. Uh, Adiel also from Brazil. Who do you see, Vicky? I see Durek from, from, I think, Vietnam. I'm not sure. Adiel from Brazil. Uh, Begit from Germany. Juan was here, uh, and he's been here for ages. <laughs> from Zaragoza, Spain. Oh, yes. We've got Cecile here, we, and we've got Mad Super Manager Agent Maddie Orson. from France. I know that Super Agent Awesome couldn't come last week, and I'm glad he's super been able Agent to come awesome. this gotta week. Have, that's got to be the most <laughs> super awesome name of anyone I've seen on YouTube. Italy's here, Andrea says. <laughs> Molly's here. Hello, Molly. Uh, it's great to see you. Terry's here from Mexico. And Kyung, I, Kyung Dang says hi from Vietnam. I don't Excellent. know if I said that name right. Probably not. Well, thank you so much for coming, me. and thanks for, for saying hello in the chat. Today, as Vicky said already, it is National Fairy Tale Day. We have a special, extra special guest today, don't we, Vicky? I, we haven't told them that. We told them that when we thought we were on the air before. <laughs> we haven't told them any of this, actually. Vicky. Yes, <laughs> but today is National Fairy Tale Day in the mm. United States. So. Yeah. There's a story theme that's running through today's English show. Mm. And we've got some great things, as Jay said, lined up. We've even got a fairy tale rap that Jay, that Fr Fluency made for us. And a special guest. And a special guest is going to be here to play a game with us, mm. which is Lola. And tell, tell everyone who Lola is, Fluency. Lola's my daughter, and she's in videos uh, that I've made, the two of us have made together. She's also been in videos with Vicky. I think today, Vicky, they're going to see us some, some pictures from some of those videos. So look <laughs> out for the pictures of Lola, and then Lola will be in a little bit later to join us for a game. That's right. Um, I just wish I could come to Paris 
fluency. You wish you could or you hope you can. Now, what's the <laughs> difference? I'm going to put that question out there because we talked about that one on the English show not too long ago. I would say, Vic, you could say, I hope I can come because you come each week because Jay is just a master at getting you to Paris. The only question is, how is he going to do it this week? That's a good question. Let's ask mm. him. Do you know? No. Oh. Well. How am I getting to Paris this week, Jay? I have this for you. But it's an umbrella. But it's a magic umbrella. you are. You said you made it. I didn't see you. Vicky, high five. High five. High five. <laughs> so umbrella this time. Yeah, it was, very, it was very Mary Poppins. Very, it, very, yeah, very, very, very Mary Poppins. What's, what's, a, what's a popular Mary Poppins song? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> there's that one and there's also the one, a spoonful Full of, of sugar, sugar helps the medicine. Go down. Yeah. How, how did it feel on that umbrella? Were it was, you scared or? No, it was a lovely ride and all around it was. the planet. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And very fairy tale like, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I don't know what, um, what other people's favorite fairy story is, what oh, their favorite happened. fairy tale is. Perhaps they've got some thoughts on that. Ooh, I was speaking them. to people before the show started, and they mm. said they liked the scary ones best. Oh, the scary ones, like Grimm's fairy tales, the, the really gruesome ones. But I understand that. I, I, I can, um, I mean, I used to enjoy those with my kids. What was your fairy, your favorite story? My favorite fairy tale? I used to, I used to get scared easily, actually. So I didn't really like when I was really little. I didn't like the really creepy ones. Uh, I preferred ones like, uh, I could deal with, let's see, I think I liked uh, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs uh, because I liked, I liked silly stuff. So I liked the dwarves. I remember that was probably my favorite. I, How about you? I, 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 liked, I liked a lot of the Disney ones, but, but uh, the Disney films that were made of mm. those, those grim stories. But I, I do remember... When my kids were little, a story that I loved reading to them mm. was a book called The Witches by Roald oh, Dahl. Oh, Roald Dahl. That's right. And in this story, it, the, he said that lots of women in the world, just, they looked ordinary, just like ordinary women, but they were actually witches. And the only way you could tell the difference was they wore wigs. Mm. So they used to have itchy heads. And they uh -huh. had webbed feet, webbed toes. <laughs> webbed feet, so you had yeah. to check their feet and then you knew. So when you're reading it to your kids, you can just start scratching a little bit. And they... Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and did, did you, did, you did that with your kids? Did of course they think, I did. Did they think you were joking or, or did they, uh, they, get, they get, actually get worried maybe? Well, maybe did... mom's a witch. I, th I do think they needed to inspect my feet at one point. <laughs> really? So yeah, you, you see the scratching, and then the next the next thing is to check the feet. If the feet are aren't webbed, if they're okay, then it was just a regular itch. So we got the question up here, everybody. What's your favorite children's story? So it doesn't have to be a fairy tale. Yeah. One of my favorite children's stories, uh, and Lola likes it too, is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Do you know that one, Vicky? I just I know the title. The title's magnificent. <laughs> I love it, especially the title I love, because it's so easy to remember it, which is my whole approach. of Say know, the title to think again. About it. It's hard, but you just repeat it enough and then you remember. <laughs> Say the title again, slowly. Uh, Alexander and the, and the Very Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Oh, sorry. Alexander and the... See, I said I remember it and then I make it. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. But let's look in the chat because Birgit is saying Mary Poppins. <laughs> Madeline, manager Maddie, the little prince. 
Oh, I've and heard of that, but I don't know the story because it's French, apparently. Uh-huh. It is, but it's been translated into probably every language in the world. That's an amazing story. Alice in Wonderland. Ooh, good one. Rip Van Rip, Winkle. Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, sorry, Vicky. I enjoyed you can... that. Um, I like that one, too. Yeah. Um, and um, The Ugly Duckling, says Matty. <laughs> I like that story. That one's got a nice moral to it mm. as well, hasn't it? You know. Yeah, well, I have a story today in a rap. I wonder if there's a moral to that story. We might have to come back to that. <laughs> and um, so this is, so this is, um, um, sorry, I haven't I've lost my place here. Good. No, that's okay. I'm just, oh, I'm somebody at, suggested Jonathan there, Livingston Seagull. Do you yeah, remember that? Charlotte's Web. That was a beautiful story, actually. Really nice. Yeah, yeah. I, want, I need to reread that one. I need to read that one to Lola, actually. Oh, she Craig can is here, now. and he says, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Ooh, I fantastic. loved that book when I was a child. So did I. So did I. All right. And um, yeah, we've got lots of good ones. The mm. Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Absolute classic. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, what have we got next? I think it's conversation time. Yay! Okay, so, oh, somebody's put the lights out. Oh, they put them back on again. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Here, here in France, sometimes, you know, the lights go out, the lights go on, you know. <laughs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> okay, so we've got um, the quiz show conversation for you today. A and quiz show ha- conversation. That's right. And what's happening here is I'm, the com- you, I'm a contestant in a quiz okay. show and Jay is the host of the show. And You are the contestant on the show. Jay is the host. Got it? Yeah. And he asked me two questions. All mm. right. And you have to listen and note, make a note. You can tell us in the chat. What are the questions he asks and what are my answers? Okay, All so right? it's a quiz show. You are the contestant. He is the host. He's going to ask you questions. We need to listen for what those questions are That's and right. the answer. That's right. Okay, guys. And now for $100, your next question is, who wrote the Harry Potter series? Oh, they're great stories. I know this. It was J.K. Rowling. You're right for $100. Congratulations. And now for $1,000, we have a history question. When was the United States Constitution adopted? Ooh. I think it was 1776. No, I'm sorry, it was 1787. Oh, I'm not very good at history. I can never remember dates. I'm sorry, Vicky. What a shame. (laughs) Okay, guys. (laughs) What a shame. He doesn't sound too sorry, actually. He doesn't sound that sorry. Well, he saved $1,000, didn't he? So, I bet I got the $100 question right. You did. And, Congratulations. And, <laughs> and the question was, who wrote the... And then, I, and then I said, oh, they're great. I know this. It was J.K. Rowling. Funny, nobody mentioned these books earlier, but they're quite mm. famous. Let's have a look at the answers. All right. And it was, who wrote the Harry Potter series? Did you enjoy the Harry Potter series, Fluency? Uh, a little. I never really got into it. My son, Oliver, read all of the first, I guess the first six books or whatever, in uh, basically around four months, five months. Yeah, Crazy. he did an epic binge just on it. ripped through them. He never stopped. <laughs> Okay, and now notice that word that we saw there, which was stories. Those are stories, those Harry Potter series. But then in the second part of the conversation, it wasn't a story that he asked me about. He said, and now for $1,000, we have a... So what kind of question was this? 
And I said, oh, I'm not very history. I can never remember the dates. And there's that word shame I wanted to highlight so that we noticed it. You can say, oh, what a shame when something bad happens to someone. Right, right. So what are the answers here? We have a history question. Notice we say good at or bad at history because mm. history is a school subject. Now, sometimes my students confuse the words history and story. Well, they're the same in some languages, aren't they? That's right. In French, I think they're the same, aren't they, fluency? Right. Histoire. Yeah. And um, so it can be confusing. But basically, mm. history is facts about the past. Supposedly, they're true. So we often learn the history of a country at school. Or, mm. um, whereas a story would be something like Aladdin, Sleeping Beauty, the J.K. Rowling stories. Those were story questions. Right. And just sorry to interrupt, but just to say that lots of great answers in the chat. Aha. Uh -huh. So with uh, Good At, What a Shame, History... Yeah. Yeah. And um, and um, here we go. Mm. Good at. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. What were you good at at school, fluency? What was I good at at school? <laughs> uh, I was good at English, uh, French, uh, social studies, which, you know, history, geography. I wasn't very good at math or science. Unfortunately, how about you, Vicky? Um, I was—I wasn't good at languages, actually. I mean, I—I I think I found French and Latin very boring, mm. and I used to—I—I <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. You're probably learn, not the only one. <laughs> I didn't really learn French until I went to Algeria, you know, and mm. um, but I used to be—I used to be good at. I, I used to be mixed up between arts and sciences because I used to be good at English and art, and I but I was also good at things like chemistry and physics and that sort of mm. thing as well. Oh, maths! Right. I was very I loved maths. Mm. I wonder and what other people are good at. It's interesting how you say maths at. and I say math. For anybody curious about British and American English differences, yeah. right? I put an S on it, and you mm. no, you put an S. On, I say math. No, With well, an S. You, you put the S on, and I guess we took it off. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a question here from Bagit, uh -huh. and she says, what's the difference between history and historical? And Ooh. one is a noun, and one is an adjective. So mm. which is which? And I think the best way to remember those, after you know one's an adjective and one is a noun, is a collocation. So maybe study history, or the history of a country, and then a uh, historical event, right? a historical, historical date from a time in the past. Yeah. So historical is going to describe something else. And historical mm. event must be a very common collocation. Mm. Yes. Um, and let's move on before we start getting into historic, historical. We'll have to save that for another, <laughs> another time. <laughs> Okay. So let's see if we're getting some. Are you seeing some school subjects yet, or not? Katie wait, thought we need to wait a little bit to see. Katie those said problems. Latin was very boring as well, mm. mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but perhaps it was useful. There is that about Latin, isn't there? That it's quite yeah. good for learning other Latin languages. Well, I think like everything else, it depends on the teacher. If you have a teacher that gets you excited about it, then it, it works. But if not, then <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> And, um, of course, reading is mm. a great way of learning these lang of any language. In fact, you know, when they come to um, look at, at how we learn languages and what, what things work, mm -hmm. reading always comes up as a really important one. Absolutely. It just guarantees progress in a language. So if you can read English books... You're going to make a lot of progress, everyone. So that means to be able to do that means you have to be motivated. And to be motivated means you should choose something to read that you really like and want to read. It's not what you read as much as how much you read. Quantity. And another thing, 
Yeah, another thing, uh, because this subject is very uh, important to me when I help students, another thing is to have reading help your English improve in speaking, listening, uh, writing. You need to read something not too difficult for you. So if you read something, you know, advanced because you want to learn new vocabulary and you're always checking a dictionary, that can help you with your reading comprehension, reading ability, but you're probably not going to remember easily a lot of that vocabulary and grammar. And that's what's so powerful about reading when your brain can just soak it up. So you're interested in it and it's not too difficult. Two very important things, I think. Yeah, I wonder what people like to read in English because we've got some very good um, linguists in this group. Mm. So, so what do you like to read in English? Please, in the chat, let us know. Yeah, I mean, I think it has to be, sometimes it's a good idea for something, to go for something that's sort of less of a challenge than you would read in your own language. Oh, yeah, absolutely. When I was learning French, um, I used to buy comics. Mm. and read them. I learnt a lot of strange vocabulary, you know, sort of words for <laughs> bam, pow, and that sort of thing. But <laughs> Well, reading is a big part of what I do with songs because the lyrics. So, you know, if, I, if, you, if you enjoy songs and reading lyrics, then that's a way to get uh, reading practice. It's not better or worse than another type of reading. The most important is you do it. Read, read, read. <laughs> I, I'm having difficulty looking. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I was having trouble listening to the chat. <laughs> to the chat. Um, and Matty says, points out that there are English books at lots of different levels. Mm. And that's very true because there are books that are specially designed for people who are learning English where they've simplified the vocabulary so you don't have to keep stopping to look words up in the dictionary. Yeah. And... Um, and Those they're, are great. they're known as if you're if you're not an English teacher and you're looking for something like that, we call them readers. Mm. That's the name we use for those books. So Maddie, search Maddie, on Maddie, readers manager Maddie and says she likes them. songs. No surprise there. Uh, Matty uh, says he likes to read short stories in English and songs of Jason. Oh, thank you, Matty. <laughs> Rosa likes to read blogs, especially mm. stories with uh, about people in other countries which is a great way to go because blogs are very short chunks of of text aren't they yeah. so they're not going to be so demanding and you can follow it the way you follow a tv series i think that's really great too i like reading stories too i think um oh somebody suggested tintin <laughs> i think that mm. might be, be for me with comics actually i did read tintin in french <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> um but um, I think stories are a great way to go, so I think we should have a story. Yeah, do you have a story ready for today? I think we might I have a story so. ready. We All right. We see. Okay. I've nice. Got... <laughs> I know that girl. <laughs> <laughs> My story is a more modern day story. It's, it's not a fairy story, but it might have a moral. I don't know. You can decide. Okay, My, we can talk about what a moral is too, right? Yeah. A moral mm. would be like a lesson or something you can take away from the story. A kind of the point of the story that the author wants people to think about. A lesson for life. Mm. Um, okay. um, so, um, my story is about an old man. It was a beautiful day and he was sitting in the street, but he was an old man who couldn't see. He was blind. Okay. And he sat in the middle of this, in this, at the side of the street, and lots of people were walking along, enjoying the day. And he had a hat in front of him, and he had a sign. And the sign said, blind, please help. Okay. And the hat was there for people to put money in. But not many people put money in it. He wasn't. They didn't. No, okay. they just walked on past him. 
And then a young girl came along and she saw him there and she looked at him and noticed that nobody was leaving money. So she picked up the sign and she took a big thick marker pen and she turned his sign round and she wrote something else on the sign and then she put it next to him. And after that, the people who were walking by all threw money in his hat. So my question is, what did she write on the sign? And perhaps so she, you can put your answers in the chat. Okay, so she obviously wrote something that made people want to give the blind man money. That's right. That is clear. Yeah. And so mm. there was something about that sign. I mean, he had, remember, he had blind, please help. So what was just it? Just blind, about? please help. So she wrote something that got people's attention more. Not just got their attention, but also uh, influenced them, inspired them to give him money. Yeah. So any ideas for that? <laughs> hmm. Well, it has to be something for... with a marketing message, I think. She must have been a, had a good marketing message there. Yeah, it is kind of like marketing. <laughs> so the thing about marketing is usually trying to connect more personally with the market. In this case, the, the people walking by. So I would say something that created more of a connection. Yeah. You know, more empathy with, with the blind man. Yeah. Oh, someone said they saw it on Facebook, <laughs> but they forgot. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great story. If, if, if you know the story, maybe don't tell us yet. Oh, I um, think maybe. they should tell us. Yeah. Come on, write it. You can write it in the chat if you know the story. Uh, somebody, there was another Yuki, story that was similar. Yukiko of... knows the story and she <laughs> guessed it. She guessed it. Oh, what did she guess? She guessed it, it. She said, it's sunny and beautiful outside, but I cannot see. That's right. It, he wrote, <laughs> it's a beautiful day. You can see it but I can't. So it may be variations on the same, but I like, I like how both of you put it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there are other guesses here. Please help this poor man. Uh, not something underlining his disability. Interesting, yeah. Help me, please. Uh, go on, everybody. Let's help this man. Oh, so Matty was suggesting that she was sort of telling the crowd what to do, mm. which is another approach, I guess. So you could go got it. I wonder, I wonder if, if, cause it is a popular story, if it would be possible to get it exactly, uh, without, without seeing it. I don't know, you but it's a, it's a great story. I wonder if it's true or not. You know, there's another story, which is true, which mm. is of, of the very famous musician who, I think he was a violinist. Yes. And he I played. Know the story. Yeah. Tell us the story. Oh no, go ahead. All right. Okay. <laughs> he played, he was, he was, he was, he was world famous and people were paying. I think it's recently, right? I mean, it's somebody recently. Yeah. So maybe even we can ask uh, the English show audience if you know which, because I don't think either of us knows the name or we would have said it, but I think a famous violinist, right? Yeah. Very, very famous who people would pay hundreds of dollars for to buy a mm. ticket to his shows. And mm. he went out and just became a busker at, I think, at... Um, at uh, Grand Central Station in New York, I'm not sure. But mm. it was interesting because he hardly earned any money and everybody was so busy going where they'd got to go, they never yeah. stopped to may, look at him. May I ask what a busker is? Oh, a busker is someone who earns money by playing a musical instrument in the street. I never knew that. I hadn't heard that one. Oh, you don't have that word in American? I do it's, I, I'm sure we don't. I, we would have heard it, Jay. Oh, right. Or I, so I, yeah, I'll type it in the chat. We say street musician, no, Jay? Yeah. Okay, so a yes, busker is a street musician. That's right. Mm -hmm. And um, and so maybe he needed a marketing sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or maybe a sign like, don't you know who I am? No. So what do you think the moral? Is there a moral to that story about the blind man? Hmm. Well, let's put the question. Oh, Jay's got the question up for everybody. Fantastic. What's the moral of this story? Hmm. So while we're waiting, just to remind you, if you don't know, a moral is 
kind of the, the life lesson, something you take away from the story, something meaningful. I don't know, Vicky. what do you think? Do you think there's a moral uh, to know. the story about the blind man and the young, young woman? If it is, I think it's a message for people who need to do good marketing, good salesmen. You know, <laughs> how can you persuade people to do what you want? Persuade them mm. to give you or buy something. Maybe. That's because you're a business English teacher. <laughs> that's, that's why that's your moral. <laughs> no. My background, everybody, I used to do a lot of business English teaching. That's true. Yeah. So I often uh, taught I, sales I agree, people. But I think, I think it could also be, uh, you know, uh, a reminder, a kind of, you know, stop and smell the roses is not exactly analogous, but that idea of, you know, uh, stop what you're doing to really think about the things that we take for granted, oh, we don't always notice, right? Like how beautiful it is and how lucky we are to be able to see it, that we are, we are not blind. That's a good expression, to take something for granted. Mm. It's when you, you just presume you can have it and you don't value it. You don't, because you're, you're not used grateful to for it. it. You don't stop and, and think about it. And you used another one. You said, stop and smell the roses. Mm. Meaning, Maybe the enjoy most important. life. Enjoy those moments of life it's when you cliche, get It's a cliche, but <laughs> it, it might be the most important life lesson there is. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and Cecile's given us another moral here. She said, talk about positive things. Mm, focus on the, yeah. on the positive. And I suppose, you know, it's a beautiful day was a way to mm. focus on the positive, wasn't it? Yeah. To get yeah. people doing that. Some um, other good comments here. Respect is a two-way street. If you want to get it, you have to give it. Uh, maybe how you put things changes people's point of view. Mm. Yes. Be empathetic. It is about empathy, isn't it? We kind of have to wake up sometimes to get our empathy going. We all have it, or most of us, um, but it's easy to get caught up in our everyday routines and, and not empathize with people when they need empathy. Julia said the blind person sign could have said, you never know where or when. Oh, my things just jumped ahead. Mm. You never know where or when you'll end up tomorrow. Mm. So there's yeah. another aspect of this, which is, you know, it's not me on this street, luckily. But, but it could it be could. To another day. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Okay. Great answers, everybody. Wonderful. Vicky, what are we doing now? What's next? Well, first of all, before we leave stories, okay. I just want to point out that the thing about a good st what is it that makes a good story? Uh, and good often it's about having a character we care about. Mm -hmm. They're facing a problem or a challenge, and then something has to happen to them that we're interested in. And we had all those elements there in that last story, plus maybe a moral or not. Um, mm. Okay, but next, let's mm. play a game. Do you think game. we can get go right. Lola? So I have to get Lola in you here. You have to get Lola in. Go get Lola! Lola. Lola, welcome. Great to see you. <laughs> look up here at the hi camera there. up there and say hi. <laughs> it's great yeah, to see you. It's easy to look there, but that's not where everyone's looking. Everyone's going to see you right there. Hey, oh. it's my daughter, Lola. Lola. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show, Lola. You're welcome. <laughs> We've got so, Vicky, tell us about this game. <laughs> okay. This game is called How Well Do You Know Your Dad and How Well Do You Know Your Daughter? All right. And I've got some questions for you. And the way it's going to work is I'm going to give you some sentences that are not complete. And you're going to have to complete them. And you'll need... Have you got pencil and paper handy? Oh, grab, grab a couple of pens. <laughs> OK. And we've got... Well, well, whatever to, you like. Good. And one of them... OK, we're getting that ready here. Good. 
And the, so okay. I'm going to give you, we'll give, put the first one up now. And the first one is Lola's favorite school subject is, all right. Ooh, so okay. let me so, give her her paper because I'm going to need paper too, right? Yeah, you can share it. Whatever well, she, you but like. We can't, we can't peek, right? <laughs> well, just grab me a pen. No, I've got paper. I'm good. I just need a different pen. So, all right. So Lola. We are ready. And look, everyone's saying hello to you. Look, Madeline's saying hello. <laughs> and Yukiko. Lots of Cecile, people who've seen you in videos and pictures and stuff. Yay. Okay, so Lola's favorite school subject. So that's a so question now, for me. It's a question for you. So Lola, I want you to write your favorite school subject down. Okay. All right. And we'll see if fluency gets it right. Okay, and, so well, we know that mm -hmm. your favorite was your. I think your favorite. You've already told us fluency. Actually, I'd have thought your favorite was music, fluency. Yeah, but not in school. I didn't have any really inspiring music teachers in school. Oh right, okay. Well, that's not fair. I did. I did. I guess I also don't think about a subject like band. I was in the jazz band, um, and I did like that. Okay, so okay, I have mine. So I show everybody first. Lola's favorite school subject is, and then we check. Well, and tell see, us what the answer is. What did you? What do you think it is, fluency? I think the answer is. Can we see that? Art. Ooh. You think it's art? Is art. he right, Ola? No. It's, no. Oh. <laughs> what? It's Jim. 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 Okay. No blue. I don't know if you can. So Jim is exercising. Oh, and she's got like Jim the name. That's so cute. <laughs> that is lovely. It's okay. Isn't that funny? Well, it is. It's, it's awesome. It's We're gonna awesome. Put the, I'm gonna put the other one because here. Because it's a very common. It's, it's yeah, they, a very well, they're common homophones. mistake. They sound the same. Oh. They do. They Jim sound and Jim. exactly the same. Well, also, look. No, you're not. You're not an idiot. On not the at all. And Lola's You just won a point. I'm gonna give you a point. Give her a point. Lola won a point wrong, because so she was because yeah. your dad was wrong. Let's see if you can get an answer about your dad, Lola. All right. Okay. What's so the next one? The, the next one is my dad's favorite meal is. So we're going to see if you can guess that. I don't know if anybody well, can guess me. in the well, chat. While we're waiting, do we want to talk about the spelling of favorite? Oh yes, Lola. Lola, what do you think of my spelling of favorite? Perhaps she can't see it. Um, but favourite is spelt my way. It's the British way here because it's got a U in it. But, of course, for fluency, it would have no U because that would be American English. There are lots of other British words like that. OK, Lola, can you give it... Oh, tell us what you think the answer is. I think, um, honestly, it's squid. Squid. <laughs> squid. That's a good guess. That's an unusual well, I, guess. I love squid. Ew. And, and what? Yeah, that Lola really doesn't like squid. I don't know if you've ever you even me, tried it. No, I'm not ever trying it. You made me remember with the lobster or you and hi with the lobster. Oh yeah, I scared you. <laughs> I think any any, yes. any seafood in the kitchen, she doesn't like to look at it. It has <laughs> eyes and uh, claws and yeah, squid is. Okay, so what about you? Um, what about you? What did you? What is your favorite meal? Fluency? My favorite meal, I have so many. So, it's, but uh, I, it, I didn't. Squid is one of them, but it's not my favorite. My favorite meal is. It's not really a meal. I'm going to get in trouble. Olives. But that's not a meal, is it? No, I'm sorry. That doesn't count as a meal. <laughs> so. So, I was thinking favorite food. Oh my God! I guess I. So Lola gets another mi a point. Oh, it's another point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. She is beating my butt. <laughs> okay, right. next one. Um, yeah. Next one is. Get on the cord. Lola's favorite YouTube channel. Can we guess what that is? I think Can it I write should it be. Down too? Yeah, yeah. Well, you write it down and I see if I get it right. And um, I think that a possibility here could be. Fluency MC. It might be her dad's <laughs> channel. Do you think so? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. My favorite oh, channel. Oh, I have to say. Oh, it oh, first, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. And then you tell me if I'm right okay. or wrong. Um, I might be wrong about the name of this channel, and there's another one she likes about Roblox. But I'm, uh, I mean, about uh, this guy who does stuff with food and weird stuff. But I'm gonna say it's Gamer Chad. 
You're right. Woo! Which one for you? Get him a check. Okay, I'll give you a different sound fluency. <laughs> Did you <What>? hear it? <laughs> but I got it right. Is that yeah. the right sound? Yeah, it's just your own right sound. It's different okay. to hers. Okay, yeah, I got it right. Hooray. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so you're in with a chance now. Now, next one is something that makes my dad laugh is, and this is quite a hard something one, Lola, because you know there are lots of possibilities something here. Something that makes my dad laugh or laugh? Laugh. <laughs> oh, not laugh? <laughs> laugh would be American, but I'm British. <laughs> That's so I say no. I don't really mess with you, so I have to do it. Once. That is so hard. It's hard. Something that makes my dad laugh is, well, let's try. Nothing. I mean, <laughs> what, what am I? What am I then write down nothing. nothing. Write down Not nothing. nothing then. <laughs> People might have some suggestions here. <laughs> That's so hard. It's hard. Just think of something. Uh, I'm, Can I have I'm a little bit of time also there? hard for me to think. Let me see. Is it, but did I give you a hard question there? Oh, right. Um, I'm going to die. I know something that makes you laugh, Fluency. Oh, my, I know something too. My British accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got it. Lola, you have something? No. Oh, she can't think of something. <laughs> okay, let's hear, let's hear your answer then, Fluency. Should we just do my answer? Yeah. You're going to agree with it. What? When Lola tickles me. Oh, what? Laugh. No? What? Oh, yeah. Why? Why am <laughs> I not thinking? Don't I have a brain for a reason? You have a brain, my love. It's just hard oh. to think of it right away. Oh. It's a live show. It's hard sometimes. It is to hard. Think of it live. It's okay. Yeah. And, and it, but it was a good answer, so I'm going to give you another good sound. So, tickle. Tickle was the answer, if anybody yes. didn't hear it. Yeah, great. Do it right now. Ah, no! <laughs> it's true, it's true. Don't do it. <laughs> but I don't like, it's funny, when you're little, I think, I remember liking being tickled. But now, I don't really, <laughs> and I Lola, laugh, but it's not. Lola gets another point for making you laugh. Okay. And it's on the, it's under the Oh, yeah, the she armpit. did make me laugh. It's under the armpit. Yes. Okay, next it's one. Important is the kind of stories Lola likes to read most are? The kind of stories Lola likes to read most. Hmm. Okay, don't so show me. Choose. Well, just choose one type of story. Okay. Think of the types of stories, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just having to copy some. So the type here. of story, not the story, right? The type, the kind of story. Mm. Okay. Okay, I got it. Have you good? Thank you for two. No, one kind of story. That's hard, then. Well, I know there are a bunch of different ones, but just choose one. The one okay. you think. Are we mm. ready? So. Yep. Wait, one so, second. All right, okay. This is going to be hard for you, actually, Florency, because there are lots of story types that there she are. could have. So okay, she might be okay. able to catch you out with this one. Well, I think I got it. I don't know if she's going to write the same thing, but I can, I can give you reasons for my answer. Okay. So tell us. I, I think it. she's finished. Okay, tell she's us got your it. answer. All right. So my guess is Lola likes funny stories. When you got another point. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. We did it. Oh, well done, Fluency. Ta -da! There yeah, you go. Yeah, because all the things I think of that we really like, like Mrs. Piggle or uh, Alexander. And the no <laughs> yeah, they're all the funny ones are the best ones. And it's my favorite kind of story, too. Okay, I've got another one for you here. Okay, oh, we got one more, I think. Yeah. Okay. I, want, I want something that makes your dad mad. Ooh, angry. What makes me angry? Can you write something down for that? Okay, I'll write my answer for that. Now we had the, we mentioned this last week, but in British English, mad would mean crazy, usually insane. Mm. But in American English, it means angry more often. We can use it that way in British English, but usually it means insane. Right. But so now so we mean angry. Reasons, there mean. are. <laughs> so people so this, have we're just guessed... trying to see if you can guess the one that, I, that I'm writing. That's all. It's just a game. Okay, so can you, you guess? You got something? No, I'm not done yet writing. You don't have to write it all. You just need to tell okay. them. Um, <laughs> as long as you know what it is. Let me think. 
Okay. <laughs> While you're thinking, people have suggested stories that you might like, Lola, and they suggested adventure stories, princess stories,、mm. action stories. Nobody, nobody guessed funny stories. Ah,、uh, but but Aaron, but Super Agent Orson says he likes funny stories too. <laughs> also, yeah, good. Okay, Lola. So, is there something so what, that makes, something that makes me mad? Oh. Go. I got my answer here. Okay. So sometimes when my brother and me are fighting, he starts hitting me, and I keep yelling at him, and he gets mad. And my mom too. Are you ready for this? Yeah. When Lola fights with her brother, <laughs> oh, got she、it. got him. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what else makes me laugh? When Lola falls off my lap during <laughs> during the English show. That's a new one. Yeah. Oh, well done! I think you both are winners there. Hooray! That was great. You did it. I, I, I think we should. I never thought、run. I'd be happy to talk about Lola and and her brother fighting, but in this case, it makes me happy. That was funny. Okay, I think we should be have a wrap now. Do you?、Should、yeah, Lola, can you stay for the wrap? Oh, great stuff. Okay, how are we doing there?、Um, Jay, Once again, it's fluency. Fluency. Once again, it's fluency. Quick, quick, quick grammar through lyrics. Kick it. Hey, 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 it's time for a rap, and the rap today, my friends, is a very short fairy tale. Wonderful.、Mm-hmm. So it, it has is- fairy tale. Vocabulary in it, which we're going to take a look at. But first, I'd like us to watch the video. If you're new to the English show, the way we do the rap for practice is we watch the video which Vicky made from my song, and then after that, we'll look at the vocabulary together and do some practice like this: me, then you, nice and slow, and then. We'll watch the video again, and remember, you can play the English show, the replay, afterwards, and I strongly encourage that to get lots of repetitive practice, not just with the song, but everything that we're doing here today. Relax, repeat, remember the three R's. So let's check out the video. Once upon a time, long, long ago, in a magical kingdom. Covered in snow, there lived a kind-hearted giant and a wicked witch who cast an evil spell which made the giant itch, but he couldn't scratch it. Then this egg hatched. It was a baby dragon. It breathed fire on the hag, and this removed the curse. Thanks to the giant, that was the worst. So they began a new chapter and lived happily ever after. <laughs> So it's a bit silly, but like you saw today, I like silly. I like funny.、So、you also like when I fall on the ground. I like when you fall on the ground. Just this once, I liked it.、Uh, so before we look at the lyrics, let's take a look at some of the vocabulary. So I think probably everybody knows witch, but, but they might not. not know hag. But yeah, hag is another word for witch. It's not as common. <laughs> So that's what that means. Giant. So giant, Vicky. Isn't that a common word we use in other situations? Yeah, I mean the giant, the noun is the man that you see here. That's very, very big. But we often use it as an adjective to describe things as well. So,、mm. for example, I might buy giant-sized packages of things in the United States. <laughs>、yes. They're very, very big. <laughs> <laughs> in the United, United States, there are giant cars,、yeah. giant houses, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then dragon, right? A mythical creature. It's a dragon in the song. And when we look at the lyrics, we'll look also at some other expressions that are often found in fairy tales. You might know them already, or might not. So if we could take a look at that, the first part of the song. So once upon a time, Vicky, what does that even mean? Probably everybody here has seen this before. It's it's strange, isn't it? It means nothing in a way, does it? <laughs> it, it it's just the phrase we use to start stories.、Mm. Once upon、mm. a time, it's like 
settle down and listen to me tell you a story. <laughs> yeah, there was a time in the past, and that's when the story takes place. So a magical kingdom, a kind-hearted giant, I think everyone, if you don't know that, you could figure that one out, a wicked witch who cast an evil spell. We've How about got, that word wicked? Wicked is very, very bad, and like mm. evil. So we've got two words there that mean extremely evil. Yes. But wicked is quite an interesting one because sometimes we can use it these days to mean the opposite, very, very good. Ooh, like a wicked song or yeah. a, a, na a nasty skateboarder yeah. who does great nasty tricks or wicked tricks, right? <laughs> yes, and so you, it could mean really, really good or really, really bad. But tell mm. us about that word cast. Well, that's interesting. Cast an evil spell. We see this word cast with spell in stories a lot, which means basically to to start the spell, to throw it. So cast really means throw something forward. You can cast a fishing line. That's something we say. Yeah. Or also you could cast a glance at someone, like throw someone a look. But you don't hear cast, I think, with very many other <laughs> nouns. But you've given some good examples there. We can cast a look at cast a look at something, put our right. eyes over it, and um, we cast a fishing line, as you say, it's like throwing. Yes. And, and then itch. Yes. So the giant was itching like the witches in Roald Dahl's story, but he couldn't scratch it. Let's go to the next, the next one. Yep. Then this egg hatched. Well, when an egg hatches, the bird, or in this case, reptile, the dragon, <laughs> comes out. Right. And um, what else here maybe we need to talk about? Well, I think just the uh, last part. Right. Oh, they the live curse. Happily. Hmm? Curse. Ah, curse. Yes, of course. That, can you explain that, Vicky? Yeah. So if I say to you, if I'm a wicked witch and okay. I say something very, very bad is going to happen to you and thereby make it happen, then that's a curse. So, for example, in Sleeping Beauty, the witch came mm -hmm. along and she cursed the baby with mm. falling asleep for a hundred years. So who removed the curse? Um, oh, the, oh, the prince. Ah, prince. so the prince removed it. The handsome so prince. In, <laughs> the hero. So in this case, the hero is the dragon. Yes, that's right. All right. And, uh, so should we practice the song together, everybody? Yes. Am I going to sing it or is it... Or is, um, well, Lola, Lola, do you want, can you do the repeating after me? Okay. Yay! All right, here we go. Well, can you stop for a second and do it with me? All right, and everybody out there, let's do some practice. We're going to make it much slower so it's easier and also so you can really notice the vocabulary and pronunciation. So, first me and then you. You do it with Lola. We're going to go like this. Once, oh, thank you, Lola. <laughs> you got to wear your hat. That on. <laughs> Once upon a time, long, long ago. What's upon a time, long, long ago? Nice. Excellent. In a, we have the microphone. It's right here. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're good. In a magical kingdom covered in snow. In a magical kingdom covered in snow. There lived a kind-hearted giant and a wicked witch. There lived a kind-hearted giant, giant and, and a wicked witch. Who cast an evil spell which made the giant itch. Who cast, who, who, who cast an evil spell that made the, the dragon itch. The giant itch. The giant itch. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't scratch it. But he couldn't. Scratch it. Good. Now we're going to go to the next one. Then this egg hatched. Then this egg hatched. It was a baby dragon. It breathed fire on the hag. It was a baby dragon. It, it breathed, breathed a fire on, on the, the, hag. the hag. Sorry, we have it really hard for us to see it on our phone, so let's get a little closer here. <laughs> and this removed the curse. And this removed the curse. Thanks, said the giant. That was the worst. 
think, said the giant, that was the worst. So they began a new chapter and lived happily ever after. So they began a chapter. A new chapter. A new chapter. And they lived. And they lived happily after. <laughs> ever after. Oh my god. It's okay, we'll do that one again. Can you read it here? No. You okay. have to read it like everybody else. That's part of it. Oh. See, reading is important. Oh, the microphone In. came off. Where's the microphone go? Sorry, guys. <laughs> here we go, so, here we go. I'll tell you, it's great. Here, have Let's it. do the last one again, everybody. So they began a new chapter and lived happily ever after. So they began a new chapter and they lived happily ever after. Well done. Lola, All you right. were terrific. Thank you. <laughs> can we watch the video? Try to do the video. Do it with the video if you can. If not, just listen and read. You can try it later on. Good job, honey. Once upon a time, long, long ago, in a magical kingdom covered in snow, there lived a kind-hearted giant and a wicked witch who cast an evil spell which made the giant itch, but he couldn't scratch it. Then this egg hatched. It was a baby dragon. It breathed fire on the hag, and this removed the curse. Thanks to the giant, that was the worst. So they began a new chapter and lived happily ever after. <laughs> no, no. Lexi, right. well done. Lola, if one says she's got the flow, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you got the flow. Yeah. That's Brother Juan in Zaragoza. It's <laughs> lovely. Good <laughs> rhythm. Yukiko said, says good you. rhythm, Lola. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Great job. So, yeah. and, and you've, you've finished us off, Lola. You've managed to be the highlight of the show for us. Yay. Did you have fun? Do you like it? Yay. You'll come back again someday? All right. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. So remember, everybody, subscribe to our channels. Make sure you sign up to our mailing list so you get notified. And make sure you subscribe to the English show. Join the English show group on Facebook mm. so Please. we can tell you. And All you the information is in the description, the video description box below. So please, and spread the word. Let's get more and more people to the English show. We're here every Sunday, same time, same channel, simple English videos. And we look forward to seeing you again next week, everyone. Jay, do you Yay. want to say goodbye? Jay. Oh, you've got no sound, Jay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, there you go. It's been my pleasure making things work and occasionally rem remembering to put my microphone on. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a lot of fun. I hope you two d you all did as well. Okay. It was great, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And yeah. um, rem uh, before this show started, someone, or perhaps at the beginning of this show, someone said, can you explain the difference between arrive, come and get? Well, we mm. won't this, sh we haven't this show but we'll put it down to do it another day. Okay, so thank yeah, that's you, a good one. that was a great suggestion. And I'm right. not sure who it was, but we'll certainly look at that. So bye-bye, everyone, and thank you bye, for coming. Everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Have a good week. See you next Sunday. Bye.